Now, don't get too excited, but there's just three months of campaigning in the EU referendum left to go, before we discover whether Britain will vote to quit the organisation. The referendum is shaping up to be an unusual political campaign, with the focus as much on issues of the heart as the head. I don't know about you, but my Facebook feed seems to consist of about 50% pictures of other people's children, and 50% angry political arguments. But can any of this online political debate swing voters in the EU referendum? And is there any point in the campaigns trying to win over people online? I turn to Jag Singh, who is advising the Conservatives in campaign, but is sceptical about the impact of online campaigning. Mark Pack of the reputation consultancy firm Blue Rubicon, who is more optimistic. And, down the line from Newcastle, Tom Harwood of Students of Britain, who has the unenviable task of getting university students to vote against EU membership. So, Tom, you're actually campaigning, you're out on the streets, and but more to the point, you're trying to convince students who are spending all their life online to vote to leave the EU. How are you actually going about that? Well, there are a number of ways. We host street stalls on campuses around the country and in towns. We uh, host student debates. We get in external speakers, that kind of stuff, and also put out content online, obviously. But the overwhelming response that we've received, well, actually, that both sides have received in this referendum so far in terms of students is just apathy. So many people just really don't care about the EU referendum. So what we're trying to do is engage people to have that discussion in order to put our case across. And what happens when you put something on Facebook trying to push it to students to convince them? Do you have to be funny? Do you have to? I mean, I saw there was one video where you had a woman complaining that uh, the EU was making her hairdryer less powerful. Do people (laughs) respond well to that? Well, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. These short photos and videos that we put out that are shareable that have people in them that people can share on to timelines because not not everyone follows a political blog or you know twitter account or facebook page and actually the people that do are probably not the people that we're trying to reach so having for example our twitter campaign i'm leave because which is a hashtag whereby people hold up sheets of paper with positive reasons why they're voting leave on them those things get shared by their friends and are seen by people who wouldn't necessarily follow political things in the first place so that's how we're really getting across So, Mark, what do you reckon when you hear something like this? Is this something that could actually swing a large number of votes or is this just sort of a way of getting your activist base excited? Well, the unusual thing about the referendum in terms of the huge media coverage that it's getting is that actually mobilising your own supporters to remember to go out to vote is probably going to be much less of an issue than it would be, say, in council elections. And it really is all about the swing voters. And what interests one swing vote will be very different from what interests another swing voter. So this multiplicity of different videos, whether it's about hair dryers or peace in our time over the last 40 years or any of the other angles, I think will be really effective because otherwise the risk is if you're sort of relying on the basic broadcast media everyone who's watching the evening news sees the same tv broadcast whether or not that's actually what's of interest to them or not jag if if, when you're running a campaign how do you try and get a message across when the audience is so fragmented when you can't just get the front page of a newspaper and you can't just secure the top slot on the evening news well that's essentially the challenge i think these days it's, it's useful to think of social media not as the solution but as a way to think about the solution and to learn about the different ways of approaching that solution so in a lot of cases, we're finding that the best way to change someone's mind is still by knocking on their door and having a real conversation with them on their doorstep. It's about a way of getting people to think about social media, not as the method of communication itself, but getting people to move on from social media to maybe engaging via email to then maybe engaging via text message, then eventually you know, knocking on the door and, and knocking on the neighbor's doors. And one thing, Mark, mm-hmm. tell me if I'm wrong on this, mm-hmm. is that sort of negative messages can work just as well as positive messages online. Is that a thing that we'll see more of, that negative campaigning will be very effective online rather than a sort of loved-up view of whichever cases? Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, when when you ask voters, do you like negative campaigning, voters get very, oh, no, I don't like that, that's really not the thing to do. But when you then actually look at the impact of negative campaigning, it it clearly does work. And with both sides in this campaign, you know, there are plenty of things to ridicule about the other side. There's lots of opportunity for the negative humour in that sense. So, Tom, do you think that ridiculing the other side is, is the best way to get students to come out and vote for you? 
Well, not necessarily. I mean, occasionally we'll have a pop at Students for Europe and their EU funded campaign. But um, really what we're doing is um, putting forward a really positive vision for what we want Britain to be looking like in the future, an internationalist country, not a regionalist country, one that looks to the wider world. And I think that's something that can really inspire people. And so what we're trying to do is start those conversations that um, we were talking about earlier. And ways that we're doing that is through humour. We brought out Vote Leave branded condoms that say that Vote Leave is the safer choice in this referendum. Um, And things that really get people talking to start having those conversations to engage them with the issue. Tom Harwood, Mark Pack and Jag Singh on ways to win over the voters in the EU referendum.